welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is a groundbreaking series that dives into the lives of people living in the last frontier. Each episode introduces you to colorful characters from around the state. Funding for Indie Alaska is provided in part by Alieska Pipeline Service Company. Catch the latest episodes at alaskapublic.org. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us here for Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. On the uh, satellite imagery, you can see uh, a system coming northward off the southeast coast. They're bringing the rain and wind into the area today. Uh, heaviest rain down to the south, lighter amounts up to the north. Uh, in fact, some areas didn't really get anything at all. That uh, slowly moving northward this afternoon and will gradually weaken. Otherwise, uh, some areas of, or an area of clouds with light snow and flurries here, starting over in the northern Cop River Basin, shifting northeastward into the uh, upper Tanana Valley, 40 mile country, bringing snow from Northway up to about Eagle, and that's sliding into the Yukon uh, currently this evening. Otherwise, uh, not too bad up to the north, some clearing skies over the north slope and also along the Arctic coast there with uh, lighter winds back to the west. Otherwise, uh, variable clouds over the interior with light winds, uh, mostly clear over south central Alaska and the north Gulf Coast with some areas of fog near the inlet. And back out here to the west, you uh, can see a system up front right through this area here, the main low, back roughly in this position. Colder northwest winds coming down on the back side of that, while uh, warmer conditions on the southeasterly flow bringing rain to the Alaska Peninsula and uh, eastern Aleutian areas right up to the Pribilof Islands. And uh, for some reason, the clouds aren't showing up here. We had some rain about a third of an inch today at uh, Kodiak. And rolling this through again, you can see the uh, colder air coming southward here. And actually, this is the leading edge of another push of colder air. They'll bring some good gales in and eventually storm force winds into the uh, western Aleutians uh, late tonight and through tomorrow. And this has since dropped down into Shimia. They recorded uh, half a mile in snow, moderate snow with uh, gusty winds, temperature 30 degrees out in that area. And that'll spread gradually westward over the next couple of days. On the chart today, again, uh, some rain up to Kodiak Island, all the way back along the Alaska Peninsula and uh, up to the Pribilof Islands. And uh, pretty good rainfall today, about an inch falling in Unalaska this afternoon, while False Pass picked up about a third of an inch and St. George around a quarter of an inch of rain. Otherwise, uh, just some variable clouds along the southwest coast. And then the patchy fog over the Sitna Valley or Madnuska Valley and along uh, Cook Inlet here, also up over the uh, central interior areas, and then that small patch of snow lifting northeastward into the Yukon. And here's a low center that brought the wind and rain again today to the uh, Panhandle. Heaviest rainfall amounts down to the south with Heidelberg and Ketchikan picking up about an inch and a half of rain over the last 24 hours, but again, much lighter amounts up to the north. Uh, to just about nothing at all over some of the northern areas like Haines on up in towards Skagway. Uh, so most of the rain over the central areas with some of that moisture may slip on up to the north this evening because we can see that that system not moving too far, just kind of drifting to the northwest there. So that'll keep some moisture in over uh, much of the southeast coast uh, overnight tonight, uh, rain or showers to the south and uh, kind of a mixed precipitation pattern farther to the north and still have this boundary here, keeping it uh, damp there over Kodiak Island, occasionally wet conditions back along the Alaska Peninsula, possibly into Bristol Bay, and uh, very light uh, snow possibilities here from the Kilbrook Mountain areas out to the southwest coast, but occasional rain or snow, light, 
uh, here for the Perviloff Islands and uh, still stays damp and showery there for the eastern Aleutians. And then the uh, colder air continuing to plunge southward there, bringing those winds up to at least gale force tonight for the western Aleutian areas and that colder air beginning to uh, edge its way in toward ADAC. We'll see for tomorrow, still right on the edge there, but looking at north to northwest winds here, 40 to 50 knots out over the western Aleutians with snow showers. And then that front kind of uh, reconsolidates a little bit here, but uh, not too strong, but enough to bring in rain into the Alaska Peninsula. Chance of light snow continues here over the southwest interior areas, but uh, accumulations will be quite light, and that kind of wraps back in around. Uh, rain and snow for the Perviloff Islands, gusty east winds there, and uh, partly to mostly day, uh, clear day here over much of interior Alaska. Could be a few clouds and flurries up along the north slope, possibly the Arctic coastal areas. Otherwise, uh, pretty good conditions uh, right down into Prince William Sound, VFR all through this area, other than the patchy fog possibly again over the Madnuska Valley in Cook Inlet. And then that uh, low finally weakens and shifts up to the northwest there and dissipates into a trough. And that'll leave a few lingering showers over the central and northern panhandle, probably some drier conditions down to the south. Uh, although slight chance of rain, uh, the system pushing in toward uh, the Queen Charlotte's there. That could bring a chance of rain into the extreme southern southeast coast, uh, Metlakatla and Heidelberg in those areas, but that's just a very slight chance. Otherwise, continued south, what, east to northwest flow here. That'll keep showers in over the Kodiak Island area, possibly as far north as Ketchumac Bay. And then for Tuesday, a stronger system moves northeastward here to about this position during the afternoon hours in the front edging in toward the coastline there, and that'll bring uh, southeast gale force winds into the central and south coast areas with storm force gusts in the forecast with uh, rain spreading northward, rain and snow over the northern panhandle with uh, snow pushing all the way into the Yukon. Otherwise, the winds on the increase here for the North Gulf Coast. In fact, gale warnings are out uh, for that area right down across Kodiak Island and uh, getting some gusty winds in the channeled areas here of uh, the Copper River Basin and uh, Prince William Sound as well, South Central Alaska, looking for a pretty good breeze to develop through Cook Inlet, uh, 25 to 35 knots. And that'll extend right down to uh, Shelikoff Strait. Scattered rain and snow showers possible for Kodiak Island there. A few isolated snow showers, Bristol Bay up to about Kuskokwim Bay. Otherwise, uh, mostly clear conditions, a few variable clouds, especially up over the upper Yukon Valley, Brooks Range in the North Slope where there is a chance of flurries uh, around the Barrow area, maybe the Eastern Arctic coast. And then the winds increase uh, significantly, gale force northeasterlies here from uh, roughly about the Bering Strait down across St. Lawrence Island and uh, good south or north to south flow here, that cold air bringing the snow showers right in across Dadak and Atka. Mixture conditions here with that uh, return flow around the low south of Unalaska, so scattered rain or snow showers for the Fox Islands. Same thing for the uh, Alaska Peninsula, and this uh, low should kick off some snow for the Perbaloff Island areas as well, but uh, looking at some pretty good gales here over the central Aleutians, but lighter winds for the eastern areas. Temperatures this afternoon, uh, 50 degrees in Metlakatla was the state's warm spot today, and that had 47, Kalak 46. Sitka also up to 47 this afternoon, 30s up to the north, Juneau in the cooler areas at 33. 29, Yakutat, 21 in Valdez with a 24 degree reading at Seward, 23 down at Homer. Uh, Anchorage, 13, about the same in Kenai with uh, cooler four degrees up at Golcana. Three with that light snow at Northway, but where the skies were clear, temperatures were far below zero with minus 12 at Fairbanks, 21 below at Tanana and a minus 23 at Bettles. 32 below this afternoon at Umiat Airfield and minus 29 at Arctic Village. They had the state's low this morning of 36 below. And in the minus 20s up along the Arctic coast and uh, 0 to uh, 10 below here up over the northwest interior with Shishmer up, up to 5. 5 below down at Nome, Ambler at 2 below, but Selawick was up to 5. Otherwise, uh, minus 9 at McGrath with uh, 7 degrees at Unalakleet, 9 degrees at Amonic and seven degrees down at Bethel. Gamble there had 12, McCoryuk at 16. Kipnook at five, but uh, Cape Nguyen up to 29 degrees and then 10 degrees warmer here 
both at St. Paul and St. George, while the Alaska Peninsula seeing lower 30s there from uh, Pilot Point to lower 40s there with Sand Point and uh, Falls Pass both at 43. Upper 30s for the eastern Aleutians, mid 30s for the central Aleutians, near 30 out to the west. For the lows tonight, uh, dropping into the upper 20s out in that area, otherwise no change uh, farther to the east, 30s for the peninsula, well below zero again, anywhere from uh, 20 to 40 below for the north slope in the Arctic coast with uh, minus 20s into the Tananon upper Yukon Valley areas and uh, below zero weather right down into the uh, Cuscombe Valley as well as the Copper River Basin and uh, 5 to 10 degrees over uh, south central Alaska, 20s along the coast and upper 20s to near 40 for the Panhandle. For the highs tomorrow, 30s to lower to mid 40s across the southeast coast and teens and 20s here for south central Alaska, north of the mountains below zero again the entire day and uh, lower 40s otherwise for Kodiak Island and the Alaska Peninsula, but the north slope and Arctic coasting well below zero. 30s to near 40 out over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. As far as flying weather goes, IFR here over the southeast coast, mostly inland areas there along the border, right back up across Lynn Canal to the passes with marginal VFR uh, along the coast and offshore. Good VFR conditions here, south central Alaska, the North Gulf Coast, right up through the interior. And then you have to get all the way up to the Arctic coast where you might pick up some marginal VFR. And that'll extend uh, through the Bering Strait to St. Lawrence Island, but uh, Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula, right down into Cuscoan Bay, all looking VFR tomorrow, much of Bristol Bay. IFR here, southeast flow, keeping conditions lower there on the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula. IFR also possible here or likely for the central Aleutians to Nikolsky up to St. Paul and St. George, marginal VFR out to the west. Passes uh, looking pretty good again, Anatovic and Adigan both wide open tomorrow. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, ceilings visibility is unlimited, same forecast for rainy as well. Windy looking good, open conditions continue for both Isabel and Mentasta. For Tanita, VFR, Portage, another VFR day there. Chilkoot and White though, occasionally marginal, possibly IFR at times throughout the entire day. And for the freezing levels at the surface, again, uh, near the Pribilofs into northern Bristol Bay, up along the North Gulf Coast for late tonight, early tomorrow morning. 2,000 feet still hanging up along the coastline as well, uh, back down toward the Alaska Peninsula. And for tomorrow, icing, uh, some areas of icing here across the southeast coast. Uh, it won't be solid icing, but uh, still could see some areas of uh, light or mixed rime icing across the panhandle there, mostly below about 11,000 feet. Same thing here for the Alaska Peninsula, and there's slight chance of icing from the southwest coast back down into the central and western Aleutians, but below about 9,000 feet. Upper level wind flow chart showing that uh, low uh, edging its way eastward, but not moving too fast, so that's uh, driving the cold air southward back out to the west, and then kind of a ridging effect here over the interior, but westerlies through the central interior at about 50 to 55 knots, otherwise a jet well to the south of the area here. And then for 9,000 feet uh, southeast flow across the Gulf of Alaska, pretty light in over the southern interior, all the way up to the Brooks Range, easterly 20 to 25 knots along the Arctic coast there, and 30 to 35 knot winds, Kodiak Island, 25 knot winds across the southwest interior, and 15 to 25 for the Panhandle, and then the stronger winds, 35 to 50 knots there out over the western Aleutians. Same pattern, 3,000 feet. Uh, not too bad here for the Alaska Peninsula. Easterly is 30 to 40 knots here over the southwest interior, even stronger back out to the west. Northerly is 40 to 55 knots over the western central Aleutians. Pretty light winds for the Panhandle, and uh, Alaska Ranger easterly is at about 25 knots. And for turbulence, uh, Pretty smooth for the southeast coast, the North Gulf Coast, uh, maybe some light to isolated moderate chop, eastern Arctic coast, otherwise uh, nothing significant, but from the Aleutian Range here across Bristol Bay, across the southwest interior, up to the Bering Strait, uh, occasional widespread moderate chop, below about six to 8,000 feet, and that wrapping back around into the western and then edging eastward toward the central Aleutians. And after the break, I'll return with a look at the marine forecasts. Convective activity is popping up. Or maybe there's ice in the clouds. Or low ceilings. Can you get through it safely? Or should you be on the ground waiting out the weather? 
As an instrument-rated pilot, these are questions you've got to be able to answer. Something to keep in mind anytime you're getting radar images off the web. Get the national composite image first before you look at individual radar sites. That way you'll be suspicious if an individual site doesn't show whether you saw on the national composite. But raw information isn't going to help unless you know what it means. You've got to be able to interpret as well as acquire the information. You've got to develop a three-dimensional view of the weather because so much of it is influenced by what's happening in the upper atmosphere. Be aware when you start your preliminary weather planning that the Weather Channel and weather maps in newspapers are only concerned with surface weather. If you want a real synopsis of what's going on, you have to know what's happening at altitude, too. We know that upper-level winds generally flow from west to east. But the winds don't flow in a straight line. In some places, the flow swings south, in others, north. The flows that swing south are upper atmosphere troughs. The ones that swing north are upper atmosphere ridges. These curves affect the weather going on underneath them. An upper-level trough tends to make the weather underneath worse, and a ridge tends to bring good weather. The best source of information on upper air movement is the 500 millibar or 18,000 foot chart. It clearly shows the airflow pattern at altitude that's affecting the weather below. Without upper air support, such as a trough, surface lows may be relatively calm. A trough can also bring clouds and precip to an area that shows no frontal activity on the surface charts. To make sense of all this, and understand how changing atmospheric conditions may affect their flights, instrument pilots have to be part-time meteorologists. Well, admittedly, most pilots don't care anything about meteorology. All we care about is answering the question, can I make it? Can I get where I'm going? Well, that's something that no briefer can tell you, because even if they know the weather, they don't know the capabilities or limitations of you as a pilot or your aircraft. That's why you have to be able to interpret meteorological information for yourself. Making the right go, no-go decision on the ground is important. Even more important is continued evaluation of that decision in flight. Here, the challenge is deciding whether to continue, divert, or return. Our flight crew is certainly prepared for the challenge. After determining conditions supported a go flight decision, they came to the airport ready for the tactical portion of their plan. Okay, what's the latest on the weather? Mm. Conditions are about the same, marginal all along the route. Three to five in haze most of the way, and the forecast calls for the possibility of thunderstorms in the area until 2300 Zulu. <laughs> so what else is new? Yeah, Briefer says they're starting to get some returns west to Cleveland, and it's moving in our direction. Hmm. If ceilings and visibility are high enough, we could always go VFR. That way, we'll be able to see the rain shafts. If we get up high enough, we'll be able to see the buildups and go around them. I don't know, though. I don't like that three to five mile viz, though. We're going to be doing more than two miles a minute over the ground. Yeah, you're right, but we don't want to file IFR and then be stuck in solid clouds, either. Kind of tough to see the weather that way. Now, the tops are running up to 12,000 now, and thunderstorms will be even higher. The good news is the ceilings are broken. So if we file for 10,000, we may be in the tops from time to time, but at least we should be able to eyeball the nasty stuff. Right you are. Oh, uh, what about the freezing level? Yeah, good question. Let's see, um, uh, 17,000 is the lowest it gets. Okay. Sounds good to me. It's definitely going to be cooler up there. And we'll be able to avoid most, if not all, of the haze. Now, <laughs> if I can just keep us out of those clouds with hard edges, well, we should have a pretty good ride. <laughs> Let's analyze the key elements of their planning. I don't know, though. I don't like that three to five mile viz, though. We're going to be doing more than two miles a minute over the ground. What's the relation of speed to weather avoidance? Of course, it can help you avoid the weather. If the forecasts are correct, their debonair will be safely tied down before the weather hits, while a cub flying the same route would probably find the convective activity blocking its path. But when you're trying to dodge weather and deviate around buildups, speed can make maneuvering around what you see more difficult. Consider speed and maneuverability when formulating your plans. And you always have the option of pulling back the power and reducing cruise speed. Remember, as in VFR, see and avoid is the best anti-collision strategy for dealing with convective activity. Now, the tops are running up to 12,000 now, and thunderstorms will be even higher. 
good news that the ceilings are broken. So if we file for 10,000, we may be in the tops from time to time, but at least we should be able to eyeball the nasty stuff. Right you are. Oh, what about the freezing level? The Mark I eyeball remains the best weather avoidance tool aboard any GA aircraft. Pilots should try to fly at altitudes where they can see the weather. But sometimes, cumulus clouds can build faster than you can climb. You'll need a plan if you can't stay on top. And if you fly high enough, you may run into the freezing level. You'll need an exit strategy if there's a chance of encountering icing. Know where the freezing level is, even if it's nowhere near your cruising altitude. It can help indicate whether a thunderstorm is likely to produce hail by its relation to the cloud tops. If there is a possibility of hail, avoid flying under anvils. This will generally involve deviation to the southwest, but make sure to give that side of the storm a wide berth, because that's the quadrant where the tornadoes form. And what did our pilot mean about clouds with hard edges? A cloud's appearance can help indicate its character. The harder the edges, the nastier the ride. For example, stratus clouds, characterized by their flat, layered look, indicate smooth air with the downside of poor visibility because of lack of air circulation. Cumulus are marked by vertical development. If the edges are wispy and indistinct, the ride will be bumpy, but not hazardous. Cumulus clouds on their way to becoming thunderstorms can build at more than 3,000 feet per minute and can give a very rough ride. Hard cauliflower edges and defined anvil tops are characteristics of the turbulent cumulonimbus, definitely a cloud to be avoided. As is this, an alto cumulus standing lenticular cloud. Only found in mountainous areas, usually on the lee side of a range, these have the hardest edges of all clouds and indicate extreme turbulence, especially below the cloud. Welcome back with well, the uh, sea ice analysis. The Chuck TC still has some open water areas there, but they're filling in by the hour up in that area. And then down along the coast here, uh, that's expected to continue to move west or west-southwest uh, over the next several days. And on to the marine forecast uh, for tomorrow, south to southeast winds, 20, 25 knots there along the coast, much lighter, more northeasterly up to the north. Southeast 25 for Clarence Strait, or south winds 25, north 20 for Lynn Canal. And then that next storm uh, bringing full gales here along all of the coastline, even up to the north there, minimum gales developing in the afternoon. North 30 for Lynn Canal, southeast 30 knots with six foot seas for Clarence Strait, northeast 25 for Stevens Passage. Cook Inlet, uh, Northern Inlet, Northeast 15 tomorrow, small craft advisories for the Southern Inlet, and those extend all the way down to Shelikoff Strait. Small craft advisories also here for the east side of Kodiak Island, up across the Barrens, Easterlies 15 to 20 from the North Gulf Coast, and pretty light winds there for Prince William Sound. Those pick up to about 20 knots uh, with higher gusts out of the northern bays there for the Sound, otherwise, Good gales here, North Gulf Coast, right down across Kodiak Island, even Shelikoff Strait, northeast 35 knots. And those gales extend right up into southern Cook Inlet with small craft advisories to the north. For the uh, Bristol Bay zone, northeasterly 35 knots with freezing spray. Easterly 30 knots here for the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Down to the south, we've got southeasterlies at 25 to 30 knots with 9 to 11 foot seas. For Tuesday, northeast 30 for Bristol Bay, freezing spray all the way down along the peninsula here with uh, lighter winds from the southeast on the Pacific side, only 15 knots, but northerlies increase uh, quite a bit there, southwest of Kodiak Island at about 25 knots. And then for the uh, eastern Aleutians tomorrow, kind of a low pressure area right in through here, so uh, varied wind directions, 20 to 25 knots, same thing back to the west. Then you get into the gales, Adak and Atka tomorrow, 35 to 40 knots, and storm warnings out for the western Aleutians there with uh, 50 knot northwesterlies. Those drop back and the whole pattern kind of shifts eastward here with uh, gales continuing over the west central Aleutians, Adak and Atka, and then the lighter wind conditions uh, becoming more variable across the Fox Islands with uh, northeast 15 to 20 knots. Up to the north or along the southwest coast, north of Nunavak Island, northeast 35 knots with those gales all the way up uh, probably the Bering Strait with heavy freezing spray. 
uh, heavy freezing spray down into the uh, eastern bearing here with gale force northeasterlies for the Pribilofs, northern bearing sea areas. For the uh, Tuesday outlook, northeast 40 now for the northern bearing sea. Gales continue from Nunavak Island up across uh, St. Lawrence Island, northeast 30 for the Pribilofs. And for the Arctic coast, uh, easterlies 15 knots, except up to 20 knots here over toward Demarcation Point. More northeasterly on the west side, and then picking up to about 20 knots from Cape Beaufort all the way down to uh, Wales. And then for Tuesday, brisk wind advisories here from Wales to Cape Thompson with uh, northeast winds. Really no change on the west side and all easterly at 15 knots. Uh, for the next several days here for the central and eastern Arctic coast. And for tonight again, uh, dry over the interior, just a few clouds around with uh, relatively light winds. Still a chance of rain, Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula, mixed precipitation over the southeast bearing. And then uh, this low still edging its way northward, gradually weakening, but uh, hanging together enough to keep a chance of precipitation in over the southeast coast. And tomorrow, that system finally washes out. A few lingering showers left behind, but nothing too heavy. Nice conditions over the interior. Quite cold temperatures, well below zero, especially in the clear areas throughout the day. Showers Kodiak Island, rain over the central Aleutians. And then the next day, watching a developing storm down here off the map that moves right up to the northeast here and brings those uh, good gales into the southeast coast with rain, possibly heavy at times over the southern areas. Rain or snow up toward the north with snow from the pass on into the Yukon. Fair but windier here over southern Alaska. No change over the northern interior areas. Snow showers out over the Bering Sea with uh, scattered rain and snow showers in the forecast uh, for the Alaska Peninsula Eastern Aleutians, Kodiak Island, snow showers and gale force northwesterlies out over the Aleutians. Well, that's a look at the weather for this Sunday evening. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. If subsistence hunting, trapping, and fishing are important to you, please consider applying for one of the open seats on your Federal Subsistence Regional Advisory Council. These seats will be filled by rural Alaskans who are knowledgeable about fish and wildlife subsistence in their region. Apply by Friday, January 29, 2016. Information at 1-800-478-1456 or email subsistence at fws.gov.